Good morning students so in this session uh, we will start uh, the normalization process for relational databases so earlier uh, we have seen the functional dependencies we have seen the closure set of attributes and most importantly we have seen what how can we compute the candidate keys from the uh, closure set of attributes and from the functional dependencies so these three requirements like functional dependencies and closure set of attributes plus the candidate key they are very uh, actually handy and they are very powerful in normalization process that's why we have gone through in detail now formally i can introduce the normalization and uh, i try to make it simple as much as possible uh, for every definition right so normalization basically it's a approach or you can call it a systematic approach to organizing a data in a database right so we are collecting a data from our clients now we are trying to make a databases and you know the purpose of a database or pur purpose of the database management system is to create insert update and retrieve the data in an efficient way retrieve the data in an efficient way is the most important task of database management system so normalization is actually we are organizing a data in a database through a systematic approach and our task and our purpose in the normalization is we want to minimize the redundancy and we want to avoid as much as possible these anomalies and for anomalies uh, i'll give you a brief if you can recall from the uh, relational database uh, starting uh, you know chapters in the starting lectures there are three kinds of anomalies insert anomaly update anomaly and delete anomaly and all of these anomalies occurs due to what redundancy and inconsistency so there are two big you can say a villain or you can say the enemies of database designers and these enemies and these villains are redundancy and data consist the data inconsistency okay data inconsistency so what we are making sure in this we are making sure that our data bec become what consistent and we remove the redundancy so that our integrity is also maintained in that so our two villains and our two enemies are redundancy and inconsistency that anyhow we have to remove and the removal process is what a normalization and important there are you know some different points uh, for the importance of the normalization one of the important point is what it optimizes a database design and obviously when it optimizes so it reduces the storage cost and improve the query performance so remember the information retrieval part or the query retrieval part is also very important so query performance should also improve and obviously it ensures the data maintainability and the scalability so these are the three you can say the advantage or a different advantage you can think of for the normalization now in different literature students uh, normalization is uh, given in a different way in a different way uh, but we will try to keep it simple because we are trying to learn in a first level so we'll try to make it simple before we start the normalization i mean the main problems with the database is i said again and again and again and again that redundancy and inconsistency so let's see one example one very simple example of data redundancy and we are considering the employee table and then in employee table if you see here there are four attributes employee id name department and the department location can anybody think where can be the redundancy or is there any redundancy in this table yes obviously if we come here we can easily say that okay, this building a and this building a and these values are repeated and this is a very small snapshot of a table uh, table you know uh, and imagine in, in actual databases how large the tables are so in this small table it causes a duplication and it causes a redundancy so this is a problem actually when the data is 
repeated and when the data is duplicated. This is called data redundancy. So obviously you can say that department location column is repeated multiple times for employees in the same department. So not at all this is, uh, this uh, kind of a table is a good table or it is not considered as a good design. This there is a redundancy. Redundancy means duplication. In simple thing, it is duplication. Then what is the example of inconsistency? Inconsistency also a major problem or a major villain of database designers. Here you see where can be the inconsistency. Inconsistency here, if I say department is IT in this case and the building location is C. And here I say the department uh, uh, Department is IT, the same department here. And now I'm saying a building B. It's just like when I, I say that your classes are scheduled in academic block one. Okay. And somewhere it is written that okay, your classes are scheduled, same class for the DBMS, your class is scheduled on academic block two. So obviously you guys are going to be confused where you are going to academic, uh, you are going to academic block one or you are going to academic block two so this is called inconsistency inconsistency again this is a major problem in database design so our task as a normalization process in our overall normalization process we will try to minimize or we will try to remove as much as possible the redundancy as well as the inconsistency right students now a lot of things I'm just putting in this one screen and uh, normalization as a process I'm putting. Okay, so this is a first picture for the normalization or this is the first snapshot for the normalization. And if you can just fit somewhere in your memory, this is the actual process for the normalization, then it will help you in solving the problems and it will give you a one wider perspective or it will give you some wider view of what exactly we are doing in a normalization. So first thing in normalization, obviously it's an algorithmic approach or it's a systematic approach, right? Everything in computer science is algorithmic and everything in computer science is systematic. When I say systematic, obviously it's step by step process i'm talking about and what is an algorithm or what is a flow it's just a step by step process right students so obviously when an algorithm is there 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 must be some kind of a input so first we'll talk about the input so what is the input for the normalization process relations or obviously in sql or in the physical model you think of tables so relations with data redundancy and data inconsistency so you are taking some dirty data by the way, this is a term and you are taking some redundant data and you are taking some inconsistent data also as an input. And systematically, you will apply the normal forms. And these normal forms, students, they act as a filters and they act as a, you know, a different kind of a filters. So your relation has to pass the first filter. And what is the first filter? First normal form. Then if it is past the first filter, obviously we have to improve more. Then we would do some more process on that. And that is called 2NF. Then we are going to apply the second normal form. And step by step it is written, so we cannot reverse the step. It is not like that. Okay, first we'll apply the second NF and then we'll apply the first NF. This process is systematic. So one NF first it will come and then second NF will come and then third NF will come third normal form. And whenever you say NF, so it's a normal form. We are normalizing a data. How much data is normalized? It is normalized at the first level is a basic level. How much data is normalized? It is normalized at the second level. So two uh, levels are passed then the third level is what third normal form and the last normal form that we are going to see is uh boys cord normal form and it is known as bcnf and after that if your relation has passed successfully these four you know a filters and these four you know test or these four examination so it is assumed that or it is considered as you have minimized the redundancy and you have minimized the inconsistency. Now the output relation 
99% will not have a redundancy and will not have a inconsistency so students have some patience this is a very lengthy process and a lot of people have done a lot of work in this okay so for understanding their work patience is required and this is a complex process also and we'll go bit by bit so i hope every body will understand uh, every detail of the normalization and there won't be a problem but only promise from your side is the patience at your end and continuation also patience means continuation that means you are not going to leave this normalization chapter so we come to the first normal form what is the first normal form we try to understand what is the first normal form and as i said because it's a process this normalization is a process so even before going the first normal form let's see what is the input step here what is the input step here so this input step says that you start with a relation that means you start with a table that may contain data redundancy and data inconsistency issues right and then you try to minimize all these things we have understood the redundancy and we have understood the inconsistency also okay so now we can go for the first normal form straight away first normal form so here is the first normal form uh, it is a first filtering as i said it's a first filtering so for example your data is there with some dirtiness is there with some inconsistency is there and a lot of you know redundancy and a lot of inconsistency inconsistency anomalies a lot of things are there with your table and with your data now you apply this filter and when this table passes through this filter some of the things are removed not the complete thing obviously this is a first level filter uh, okay so all of the things are not going to be removed all the problems are not going to be removed there are two requirements and this is a bookish form of the requirement each column should contain a atomic values okay uh, why they are writing like this because when you are collecting a data from a client side so they don't have a specific formats and they don't understand the relational models because the clients are not a computer science guy guys so they they keep their data in in whatever form they like okay so we can't uh, force them to keep it in this form right so it's our duty to put their data into some standard form so the first thing says that each column should contain a atomic values indivisible indivisible means what further it cannot divide and there should be no repetitive groups or arrays in the table right and after applying a one and if the table will contain a single valued attributes only removing any multi valued or composite attributes right so there are two more terms here we are introducing multi valued and composite attributes but i hope you can reconnect uh, uh, your knowledge with the previous uh, you know the contents that we have seen uh, especially the er model remember the first model that we have studied is er model and in er model the attributes there are different type of attributes and one of the attribute is what multi valued attribute multi valued attributes means what there is one attribute and further it is divided into different parts different values so this is called a multi valued attribute uh, i think i i explain the composite attribute in this case okay i'll come to that what is a multi valued attribute okay i beg your pardon multi valued attribute exactly it is one uh, you know attribute is having too many values i'll give you an example composite attributes is like this they are further divided they are further divided before you know making anything complex just i'll give you a simple example so suppose that you are a database designer and you are working for any xyz corporation or any xyz organization ask us to design a database okay and now you are designing database for some university or for some college and here the college is giving a data in this form they are actually they have stored in an excel form so this is a snapshot of a excel file only so what they are giving roll number and then they are giving a student name then they are giving age and then they are giving emails also emails for the students now if you carefully observe here student this student name is further divided into three parts further divided into three parts so this is a student name 
there is an attribute and it is further divided into three parts first name then the middle name and then the last name what about this attribute this attribute is a composite attribute and composite attributes can be represented in an excel file or maybe in a, some other files also but it is not at all allowed in relational databases because relational databases expects only the atomic value there is no problem with this roll number and there is no problem with the age but there is a problem with this now if you come here this is what a multi-valued attribute. How come it is a multi-valued attribute? For one student, you know, multiple email accounts can be there. And here you can see for every student, there is what two uh, email accounts are there. And in Excel, just separating two values by a comma, it is allowed. And this is the snapshot from the Excel file only. So it is allowed just by putting a comma, these two values are separated. But in relational database, it is not at all allowed. This is called a multi-valued attribute. So how can we remove these two, you know, you can say the problems? Because the first thing is that there should be no multi-valued attribute. And the second thing is that there should be no composite attribute. So if we, you want to remove a composite attribute, simply you can, you can remove this, uh, you know, attribute name and you can put it like this roll number first name middle name and last name and here if you just consider this portion of the table this table is now normalized normalized not completely normalized it is normalized in one nf now it is actually passed the first test only this table but what about the last attribute still there is a problem and the problem is with email again as i said comma is not at all allowed especially in rdbms comma is not allowed because each thing is considered as a single atomic cell so how can we do that uh, obviously if uh, you are uh, applying some uh, of your intuition then you can think this way can i actually insert some more rows and in exactly one row i will put it this one thing uh, let me try to explain let me try to give you a clear-cut picture what i'm trying to say here can i put like this this table can i put like this uh x gmail this is the gmail account for what uh roll number 101 and this y g uh, y uh, email account for abc account is also for the roll number 101 okay so somehow somehow we have actually achieved or we have removed the multi-valued attributes right multi-valued attributes so this this table right here you can see 102 102 there are two roll numbers and here you can see that there are two different email accounts so somehow we have actually converted into first normal form but when you are converting when you are applying a first filter or a first normal form obviously it came into a relational form and it passed the no first normal form test but some other problems we are actually uh, uh, we are approaching to some other problems like earlier i think all of you can understand this is a this is can this can be considered as a primary key because all the values are different in this and there are only four values but now here I can see that I lost the property of primary key for the roll number. Now, in this case, the primary key or the candidate key has become what? Email. Uh, you can see that this has become a candidate key. I'll call it a candidate key. And all the values are different in that. All the values are different. So uh, uh, this way, you can apply the first normal form and you can remove.